tip it over, that's the best side. That's the side we'll see. Here we have the wire on the back that Helen's fitting. This wire holds all the slats still in place, stops them from moving. So using the wooden blocks of spacers. We're using 16mm staples that get right into the get right into the wood and two and a half mil wire which is stiff enough to hold everything together. Yes. That staple clamps down onto the wire and makes a small dent in the wire to stop it from slipping. Okay. One more to go. And keep that last one off the frame so that the water won't collect along its edge. Now that clamp is just there to hold the wire loosely so that you can adjust it if necessary. Just trimming it to length. It's just slightly short of the wood so it doesn't catch. And the last few. ready for painting. Well, this wire keeps this wood nice and taut. It doesn't flap about in the wind. It stops people playing it like a harp. It's looking real good. And those are the ones that we've finished. You can see how all the slats line up nicely. Everything looks good and straight. They're ready for painting. actually help keep the water out. I notice when the screws tighten up a little bit of the 
fence paint squeezes out, which means there's a bit tight bond there. <laughs> I want to show you what I've been doing here up close. You can see the bar there, that uh, metal strap has been attached to this cross brace. And if I pan the camera around a bit, you should see that the screws don't protrude beyond the face of the fence, the edge of the fence here. So that when this is slotted back into the concrete post, this will not provide any obstruction against the post. I've cut this to length and I've cut the 45 degree angles on both ends and this is, stops this from having any clearance problems with the concrete post when the fence panel is refitted. This is cedar. Cedar is a nice outdoor wood. It doesn't rot too badly. So for things like this where the water is going to sit, it's not such a bad idea. this a couple of coats before this is finished. Here's my trusty spacer. Lines it up properly. Some zinc plated screws here. sixteenths of an inch channel here for this metal strap. I need to set my guide at this depth on the edge. So it fits pretty good. It's flush there. And you saw me take a little bit of wood off the uh, top there. It's just so we don't have a sharp corner so that uh, this fence paint will sit more easily on that beveled edge. It's more likely to soak in less problems later with the rain. I'm going to get around and just make sure they so it's nothing that's been exposed when I was stacking these up, I painted them, so I'm stuck together. And, uh, you know, I've got spaces between them. I've separated them again, sometimes the space is full of paint, paint paint off, and left some of the wood showing underneath, and some places the space itself split. And
I'm leaving two holes free and then putting a screw in. It's not going to go anywhere, it doesn't need anything, it doesn't need to be fitted more securely than that. Show the front of the fence. You can see how that all goes together. You've got the original fence panel with the new drip molding which ties the lattice or the uh, louvered top to the bottom quite nicely and then I just took the top from the fence and put it on top there which is a decent use of the wood and I think it goes together quite nicely. And it's all held together with these metal strips, which, um, when they're sideways, are certainly strong enough to stop this from moving about. Over here, you can see the post. You can see how this is cut just to enable this to fit. And there's a gap there, um, which I need to fill with something. So I have a plan for that. The last part of the project is to fill this gap. I've constructed something like this, with a rounded top, rounded bottom which reflects the rounded top of the post. This will sit in behind here. The brackets on the back of this, when it's screwed to the back of the trellis, will pull it all in line, so it should all square up nicely. Um, I'm standing this spacer on a three-quarter inch block, so that there's a bit of a gap there. And I'm cutting it to length, so that the top protrudes three-quarters of an inch above the top of this moulding here, the top of the fence cap. Okay, I'm back in the workshop. This is the wood I'm going to use. Uh, this is some lumber I got from the auction. So we'll start by squaring this end. Measuring my 25 to 7 8. I found this WD-40 can to be just the right curve that I needed, so I pushed this right up to the end. Just mark it out in pencil, get the right radius. Do the same on both sides. And then I've got to remove the waste. I've got my trusty 12 inch disc sander here. I got this used from a technical college in the UK. I'll put it on eBay. Just checking that it's at 90 degrees, which it is. I don't use it that much, but when you need this particular tool to round something off like this, there isn't a better tool really to do it with. Well, here they are. I've just finished sanding these on the disc sander. You can see I've curved both ends. The next thing is to put them on the router table to take off these edges.
to take a break. So you can see this in close up. Looks really nice. It's a nice way to finish it. Feels good and solid. Feels like a nice addition to the fence. Getting the paint on them. Do the ends first. Go off the sides. liberally it's going to soak in this stuff soaks in quite well and it seals the next coat is the one that uh, provides most of the protection you can see it's a bit darker all painted and ready to fit in the end I gave these four coats of paint I did talk earlier about pull-off that happens there's an example of where two bits of wood are touching and when they dry, you separate them and the paint comes off. So you have to obviously give these a bit of a touch up when you fit them, but there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, this is the last stage of this job. I figured out where I want the brackets to go. So I'm using my set square measured from the top of the rounded end. My little mark. enlarge that slightly. I want the fence panel to be centered on this piece of wood so I use a spacer. same face when I flip this over so these all line up properly there we go. Right, stainless steel screws non-magnetic can be a bit fiddly because they want to go their own way see what I mean Take a walk around, see the finished product. You can see the bird spikes on top of the fence. That's the corner of the fence. There's a specially shaped piece that goes between the two panels there. angle piece behind the bush there you can't see it again
the short piece. This is where the gate will go. Through here. This is where the fence starts. You can see I put these extra pieces on the end just to cover up the strap. Finishes the job. That's one, two, three. That's where the gate's going. Short one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 13 to the end. Going around the corner here. Let's just have a look back where we've come from. It's 13 to here. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 to here. That's where we've come from. It's the corner piece. Not a 90 degree angle. It's 20, 21, 22, and the short piece here, 23. That's it.